Hi everyone, this is Yael Averbush West. Welcome back to Football Americana, a 90 Min podcast. Today we have Ricardo Pepe, US Phenom and star of SC Dallas. Let's dive right in. This episode was recorded on September 24th, 2021. So I'm really excited to speak to Ricardo Pepe, who plays for FC Dallas and came up through the FC Dallas youth system as a homegrown player, coming onto the scene for the men's national team. Definitely one of the most exciting American talents. And Ricardo, I know I've listened to some of your interviews, so I know that you're a very humble person and you probably hate listening to this part. So I'm going to start by, I want to get to know you a little bit um, off the field. First, I'm curious if your teammates have a nickname for you or like, what do your teammates call you? No, I mean, recently, every, everyone just called me Pepe, but I feel like, you know, now they're starting to call me Tran, the train. So, you know, it, it's sticking to me everywhere I go, everywhere I see, you know, on social media, the train is my nickname now. So, so your teammates have picked that up too? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was wondering if that's just like what fans call you or if your insiders and your friends call you that too. No, my, my teammates have started calling me the train too. Not even just my teammates, my family members have also. <laughs> called me the train. That's um, how you know it's really stuck. That's great. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so do you, uh, you can be honest, like, do you enjoy the media part of, of this profession yet? Or are you really just like, let me do my thing on the field. And this is just kind of what you have to do. I feel like it's a, it's a mixture of both. You know, sometimes I do like talking to the media, you know, but I feel like sometimes I just want to go out on the field and, you know, show what I'm capable of doing for sure. But, you know, it's like a, it's like a balance. I feel like if I keep it balanced a little bit, then it'll for sure be, you know, good on both sides. Yeah, no, I, I understand. So I want to start off and talk a little bit about your youth soccer upbringing. You know, you talk about how in El Paso, where you grew up, it was all about soccer, which is pretty different from other places uh, around the U.S. at least. Um, like, talk a little bit about how that in, has impacted you as a player and like, would it have been really, would you be a different player now if you grew up somewhere else, you think? I feel like I will, you know, I feel like that, you know, just being from El Paso in general and, you know, soccer being a sport, the only sport, the main sport, I want to say the only one, but the main sport in you know, Paso, I feel like that, you know, kind of forced me to stick to soccer and, you know, want to play soccer a little bit. So if I don't know if I was born somewhere else in, in the U.S., if I would have that same mentality of, you know, of just soccer and giving giving my all to soccer. So, you know, I'd be very curious to see what that would be like. For sure. Well, I think all of us as fans are very glad <laughs> that you what you stuck with soccer. Um, and I know that your dad uh, coached you at first and you've, you talked about that, you know, he was hard on you because you guys could both tell maybe that you were a special player and you had this potential. I'm curious to know, like, when did you first realize as a player that maybe you, you know, had that you were pretty good? Like, was there a point or something that happened where you remember thinking like, well, I could I could be good? Yeah, I remember, you know, just random people asking my dad this question. And I was there when he answered this question. He told me that, you know, he could just see the difference between me and other soccer players in El Paso. And, you know, he's, he could see the way of thinking that I had compared to other players. So around the age of 10, I feel like that's when he found out that, you know, I had some potential and I had some talent. Were you aware of that, you think? Or like, do you remember knowing that? No, honestly, no, because I mean, I was 10, 11 years old. I wasn't really thinking of like, oh, you know, I'm so much better than this player. You know, I was just thinking about having fun out, out on the field and enjoying the, the game. Yeah, which is probably probably for the best of that age, especially. Yeah, honestly, I feel like, you know, at a young age, you just go out there, you know, get your exercise in and enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah. And do you think, you know, as a young player, do you have a sense of what made you special? Was it a physical component? Was it like that you understood the game really well? Was it technically that you were very good on the ball? Like what, what was it that kind of started to differentiate you? I feel like it was just my hard work. You know, I wasn't the best player back then. I feel like, you know, I was an average player and, and since my dad started, you know, seeing all the talent and my potential, I feel like he started pushing me a little harder. And even just my coach from El Paso, he saw my potential. And after every training, we stayed for about an hour just to train and better the things that I had to work on. Yeah, which I think you hear like all, all the pros will say it's not necessarily like the, the part you're born with or that it, it's the work you do. So it yeah. definitely echoes what I think we all know gets you to the top. Um, so I saw, I, I watched like some, some background uh, interviews and stuff about you. I watched this day in the life segment from a while ago where your brother was cooking you eggs for breakfast, which I love by the way, because my younger sister would sometimes cook me meals on game day and stuff. But um, does he play soccer? Did he play soccer? Or do you have other siblings who play? Yeah. I mean, I have a, I have two siblings and one, my little sister's 12, my older, my older brother's, you know, he's um, 16. So 
I'm the oldest one out of all three of us, but yeah, they both play soccer. I feel like, you know, my brother plays, he takes it a little more serious than my sister. I feel like my sister just does it for fun, but yeah, I mean, he does play soccer and I'm gonna try to get him into the academy. So he has, he, you know, he's a pretty good player, but yeah, they both play soccer. Yeah. Do you guys ever train together? You play out in the backyard or they let you do your thing? <laughs> Yeah, no, sometimes when I do have time, you know, just hang around with my, with my siblings. I do play around with them, you know, my little sister, my little brother. So uh, I try to play around with them and, you know, just dedicate as much time as I can uh, off the field to them, you know, just train with them and train my sister. And they're always asking for help, obviously. So they, they got no. a good coach. <laughs> good coach. <as> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so, you know, something I want to get into as we talk a little bit is, is your opinions and your observations, you know, being a Mexican American and you talk about, you know, that you, your family speaks Spanish at home and you're eating Mexican food. So I'm curious just to know a little bit, like, do you have a favorite meal you eat at home or, or do you cook? Like who cooks the meals and what's your favorite thing you have at home? Yeah, my mom. Most of the time, it's my mom just cooking meals. You know, sometimes she's tired of, you know, from work or things like that. I help her. But, you know, there's always this, I don't know, I feel like we cook a lot of steak. And the way I feel like is the way we we cook it a little bit that makes it a little different from like, you know, the U.S. in general. I feel like we the things we eat with it is just a little different. So if I if I had to choose what would be my favorite Mexican food that, you know, my mom cooks, it's just steak, you know, and we usually do it on weekends. And she tries to like put like some mashed potatoes and sometimes like some some quesadillas and things like that. So I feel like that's my favorite meal. I'm sure your teammates are like trying to come over every weekend too. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is some teammates, you know, that they're randomly just asking like, oh, how's the food? Like, what'd you eat? And things like that. But I feel like, you know, we have a lot of culture in our team and some are like, we have, you know, people from Honduras, we've got people from Argentina and things like that. So we do have a, a lot of culture in our team. And I feel like in some way we all share a little similar um, culture. Speaking of that, I've heard you talk about how, the, you know, people always ask, and I think this is something we're all curious about, is what is FC Dallas doing differently to have all these great players coming through? Um, and, and I've heard you talk about the professionalism of the youth system and the youth academy. I'm curious to know a little bit more about that. Like, in what way do you think the youth academy is really professional? Is it that everyone's held to a high standard? Is it the facilities and the resources? Can you can you be a little more specific as to what about it is is professional that's creating these these great players coming through? Yeah, I mean, so when, when I was back in the academy where there was times where like, you know, we would travel to to tournaments and I'd feel like I'd say is the same way we travel right now as the first team, you know, we'd go to a hotel and we we just take it very serious, you know, and not even just that, but the competitiveness and training was so good that, you know, every player out there was, you know, was good and that would just push and make the environment much better than, you know, I feel like other clubs do, but I feel like we had a lot of talent, but it's just the atmosphere they put us on. So like sometimes it will call us up to first team trainings and just prepare us in that, in that way, you know, just being able to train with the, with the first team or now the second team, I feel like that helped a lot. Yeah, and I think certainly I can, I can think of times when as a player, when you feel that link, it also helps with your motivation because you feel like you're getting so close to the first team, even before you're, you know, able to be there. So that's, it's really interesting to think about how they create that link. Yeah, no, it's for sure. Like, you know, I was called up to some first team trainings when I was about like 15, 16 years old. And, you know, that just helps you a little bit just to like get a little taste of what the first team, you know, trainings are like or the level, you know, just the level of the game. And I feel like it helped me a lot just in, in to prepare me for when I first signed my first contract. Yeah. And going back to when you were a little bit younger, you know, growing up, watching the game. I know you talk about some of your heroes as players. Do you have a first um, uh, memory of what you remember as U.S. soccer? Like, was there a game you first watched or when you first remember, like, having a consciousness about that? My first memory, if I'd say, if I'm being honest here, is a game that I was watching between Mexico and the U.S. And, you know, it was very competitive between, you know, just me and my parents. Sometimes I would just be against my parents just to, like, you know, mess with them so i'd be like oh i'm going for the u.s's game and my parents would be like oh then get out, get out of here and things like that but that's what that was back when i was like you know 10 11 years old so i would just mess with my parents like that and i feel like that's my first memory and the best memory i've had just in supporting the u.s and also just you know the u.s in general yeah soccer. i love that that's a great story and did you have any thought in your mind at that point that one day you would have to choose which country you'd actually represent on the field Honestly, no. Honestly, I feel like I was too young for just to even think about things like that. You know, I was still in El Paso. I didn't really know what, 
what my potential was yet. So, you know, I didn't really start knowing until I was like 12, 13 years old when I first moved to the academy. So, you know, I was just a fan at that yeah. point. And thinking about, obviously, that's a, a huge decision you made in your life fairly recently uh, to represent the U.S., you know, having come up through playing with both sides of the youth national teams. Um, can you talk a little bit, like, was that a really stressful decision? Did you always kind of feel like you might want to play for the the full team on the U.S. side? Or like, did you literally write a list of pros and cons? Like, how did that decision happen for you? That decision was made in a span of like, honestly, it was like two or three years. You know, I was I was thinking about, you know, when I first got called up to uh, my first Mexico national team call up, I was like I was 15 years old. And then like three months later, I got called to the first um, U16 national team for the U.S., and that's when I was talking to my parents about, you know, which one am I going to choose? But I feel it was just a little, I was a little too young to even like, you know, decide about the first team. Like, and then, you know, that decision was, was hard. It was a very hard decision, but I feel like I had a great opportunity to, to make it to, you know, the World Cup qualifiers. And, you know, I feel like the U.S. was trusting me and, you know, and my game to be able to go out on that field and do the best I can. So I feel like I was in a very good moment and, you know, I could help other teams. So, that decision was made just talking to my parents, talking to my agent. And, you know, I felt like it was the best decision yeah, I made. It's, it's so interesting to hear you talk about it because obviously coming up and being invited in with the youth national teams you have in your mind, like this is probably going to be a decision I have to make one day, hopefully. Um, so do you have any advice for like, there, there's a whole generation, I think of Mexican American players coming up behind you who will probably have a similar decision to make one day as you. Do you have any advice for, um, you know, younger players kind of following your footsteps who may be able to play for both countries? Like, what would you tell them in terms of making that choice? Yeah, the best advice I can give is just, you know, picking the side that you feel the most. You know, I feel like I really feel close to the U.S. and I really feel like when I when I'm out there just listening to the national team, the, the national anthem that, you know, I could feel that relationship and I could feel that in my heart that, you know, I'm protecting the U S and I'm fighting for the U S. So I feel like it's just has, it has to be a feeling and you have to make the decision with your yeah, heart. No, that's, that's great advice. We'll have this clip recorded for anybody else making the decision to send it to them <laughs> before. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So last kind of question about you as a younger player, before we get into who you are now and some thoughts on uh, current soccer culture, uh, like, do you have a first general memory as a fan? Is there a, a, a club team that your family supports? Did you support a specific club outside of FC Dallas, maybe <laughs> coming up? Back when I was younger, you know, we used to watch soccer every weekend, but it was it wasn't the MLS. It was the Liga MX. I, I'm pretty sure you've heard me say it, but um, I was a fan of America and I'm, I still am a fan of America. I just you know, I just grew up watching them. And, you know, to this day, I still watch them a lot. So that if I'd have to say and if any club that besides Desi Dallas would probably yeah. be America. Yeah, no, you, you know, I've done my research. I listen to you. Listen to your yeah, yeah. So um, do you, uh, curious about that. Like one more thing. Do you, do you look at, you know, being a fan and now, you know, being a player who maybe is a rival or going to maybe compete against some of these players one day? Has that changed how you watch the game? Do you still watch it in the same way as a fan or now are you looking in a different way like oh if I go up against that defender here's how I would maybe you know get the most of it oh no sometimes I feel like just watching it as a fan and you know just out there enjoying the game but uh there is sometimes that I look at a game and I, I want to learn you know I want to learn from it not even just from the defenders but from the attackers you know some of the movements they make or things like that but there is sometimes that I just watch it as a fan and I just enjoy yeah. the game and and this is a good kind of uh segue into what I want to talk to you about which is like who you are now as a player I love hearing you talk about uh the players you watch and how you approach the game and how you study because um just as as a former player myself I can really appreciate how seriously, you take your craft. Like, I think that's what it is, especially as a striker. It's a, it's an art. So I appreciate that. Yeah. And, um, what do you think? I know you're very humble, but if you were to evaluate yourself as an outsider, what makes you most special as a, as a professional player now? I feel like the thing that makes me more special is just the, the ability that I have to finish, you know, my finishing skills in the box. I feel like, you know, they come very natural and I've always worked on, on them to make it the most natural I can and just become a natural finisher. So if I had to just go based on one thing, it's just my finishing skills and in, in and around the box. And that's funny. It's like you saw my notes. Cause my next question for you has to do it specifically with that is, um, do you feel that this is something instinctual you have just from playing or is that a trained quality, like from watching specific players? Like, how do you get that? 
Yeah, there's definitely some, you know, some skills. There's definitely some working hard for it and things like that. But I feel it's just more more about, you know, my instinct. You know, I don't really think about what I'm going to do next. If I see a ball just coming at me and a goal right in front of me, I feel like I'm just going to put it in the back of the net or just, you know, take the shot with my instinct. But there's also things like techniques and power and things like that that you have to learn. So it has to do with a little bit of both. Yeah. Do you, is this something like, do you stay after training? Is this something you've spent a lot of extra time on or is it things you've learned and been coached as part of your team training sessions? Yeah. I like getting a lot of reps after training, you know, just shooting at goal, you know, putting a, you know, a keeper and telling him to just stay in for a couple of shots and, you know, just shooting and go and learning different techniques, learning different powers and things like that. But it's just things that, you know, I say after training, I try to work in better than yeah. for sure. Poor, poor goalkeeper too. <laughs> poor, poor guy. Um, <laughs> is there a specific <laughs> technique or something you think of that you watch another player out there do? Maybe one of your heroes growing up or something that you're like, oh, I wish I could do this one thing that someone else does? Uh you know, just growing up, I feel like it was crazy just the some of the hits that the players have, for example, Krishan, although that he has a knuckleball or like Roberto Carlos that he has that outside of the foot, you know, hit. And does I feel like I wish I could do some of those skills. I feel like I can do the knuckleball, but not as good as Cristiano Ronaldo. But uh, I feel like every player is just different. You know, it's just different. And he has different things than I have, but it's just that the base of the base of it is just hardworking and I feel like I do that pretty well. We're just, you know, I feel like that's my biggest talent if I had to say. Yeah, and I think, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about that a little bit. It's not just scoring goals. It's like everything you do for the team, which I obviously, um, having been a midfielder, I would really appreciate that always when the forward is, is actually working and not just waiting for that one opportunity to finish. So it's, um, you are scoring a lot of goals, but I think that's clearly very, very valuable. <laughs> um, so, I wanted to talk to you about some of your opinions on U.S. soccer culture. You know, being a Mexican-American, hearing you talk a little bit about uh, maybe w w the differences between um, American soccer culture and Mexican soccer culture. So in your experience, how are those two soccer cultures different? Or maybe how, how are they the same if there are ways that they're the same? The main difference I say between, you know, just Mexican and American soccer culture, I feel like it's just, you know, the, the thing that sounds out a little more is the the way people take it so serious in Mexico, because like I said, you know, it's the main sport over there. There's sports besides like, you know, baseball, which is probably the second biggest in Mexico. And besides that, I think like that's probably it. And in America, I feel like there's a lot of sports that people like to watch and are very popular too. So I feel like it's just that. And, you know, I feel like in Mexico, people are making a living out of just playing soccer. So I feel like it's also that that makes a little difference. So, I'd say that's the biggest difference is between, you know, American and Mexican soccer culture is just how serious they take it. And some people over here in the U.S. just do it for fun. Yeah, it's just you know? an another sport here sometimes. Yeah. Uh, how do, you, do you think yeah. that we can get to the point here in the U.S. where it's more like what you're describing in Mexico, where it's like people like live and die by their teams and they really have that close tie? Like, I guess I'm curious to know from you is like, can we get there or is and if so, how does that happen here? I feel like we are. I feel like we are in a couple, you know, I'd say five, 10 years that that's a possibility for sure. I feel like soccer is going a lot, not only in, you know, around the world, but in the U.S. in general. So, you know, I feel like we are taking soccer a little bit more serious than we used to say five years ago. So that's definitely going to happen. And it just I feel like just, you know, it's just growing. It's just growing a lot. And I feel like by itself is just going to come natural to, you know, people in the U.S. to so, start supporting soccer and taking it a little more yeah, serious. No, I, I hope you're right. I, I've seen a, a shift as well with a, a lot of people even understanding the game more and appreciating it more here. So yeah. I think we're on the right track. For it just sure. takes some time. <laughs> um, and speaking of kind of the, the U S and, and Mexico dynamic, have you thought ever like imagined the day when you step on the field for the U S to play against Mexico? Yes. You know, that's always been a dream of mine to be able to play versus, you know, my, my rival, which is in this case, Mexico. So I feel like that would be one of the best games that I could ever participate in, you know, just feeling that, that feeling, you know, of just playing in a game where, you know, you're, I'm Mexican and I'm American. So I'm definitely just going against the Mexican side. So that's for sure. A yeah, dream of mine. Your, is your family now like all, always uh, pulling for the U S or just only when the, uh, when it's U S against Mexico, like how do they, who do they support? <laughs> 
my family is all American now. So, you know, they bought their shirts, they bought, you know, not even just my family, my friends, you know, they're all supporting me now. So, and before it's crazy because before they would all support Mexico and I even, you know, my family, my parents, my grandparents, people like that would always just go for Mexico. And it's crazy because now they just don't even look at Mexico. They don't watch them as much. They just go straight for the yeah, U.S. I, I love it. That's great. <laughs> it's, a good, it's, it's so cool to see, especially like thinking of you as that 10 year old and that experience at home rooting for the U.S. only because your parents were rooting for Mexico. Now thinking about it, that you've, you've changed your yeah, family's it's, it's uh, crazy. allegiance. It's a, it's a whole shift. I love it. It's a whole shift. That I love it. So a couple <laughs> more questions uh, for you. How... Uh, how can U.S. soccer and its culture be more inclusive to Mexican American players and fans? Like, how how can we do a better job of um, getting more more fans who maybe are Mexican Americans to to follow the American game, to follow MLS teams, and root for the U.S. national team? No, like I said, you know, I feel like the this, the U.S. soccer is growing a lot, and you've seen it in just youth national teams and even national the men's national team now. I feel like we're getting way better than you know. It's just a, the system we're in right now. I feel like it's great for young players. And I feel like there's a lot of people adding themselves to to and they enjoy just watching young players. And I feel like people are just coming to to watch the game even more and supporting the game even more. But I feel it's just, you know, people just enjoying the game. Yeah. People just enjoying the game that would bring a lot of people and bring soccer to an attention, especially American yeah, soccer. So- I have one more question about you, and I, I really appreciate your time and you sharing your, your thoughts and opinion on this. I think you have a, a really unique perspective, so um, it, it's it's fun to hear you talk about yourself as a player and what makes you special and kind of your um, your different uh, thoughts having been a fan and, and you know, now being out there where others are fans of you. Um, so I know that you're totally focused on FC Dallas at the moment. You're having a great season. If you look forward 10 years from now and you've accomplished everything possible at FC Dallas and MLS, you've set every record. Is there like a bucket list team in Europe that you're like, I want to make sure before I retire as a player, I spend at least a little bit of time representing this club, whoever it is. <laughs> That's a fairly easy question. You know, if I always told my parents, I told my agent that my dream club was my dream has always been playing for Real Madrid. So, you know, before I even retire, you know, I want to play a couple of years, not just, you know, months. I want to play at least three, four years in Real Madrid. Just, you know, I feel like that's the top, top of the world. So uh, that would be I amazing I'm, for me. I'm definitely going to get my Pepe Real Madrid jersey when that comes. <laughs> when that <moment> comes. So, <laughs> just wait, just wait for me yeah, 10 yeah, more no, years. I'm, I'm going to wait. I'll be patient. I'll be patient, but I'm going to have my Pepe Real Madrid jersey. <laughs> You've heard it here first. So uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck in your game tomorrow. I know it's a uh, pregame day, so I, you're busy. You got a lot of other focuses. So thanks so much for having the conversation. And uh, I look forward to following your career and, and being a fan of yours. No, oh, thank you for, you know, just having taken the time to to talk to me. And I really appreciate you just following me around and, you know, just following me. So thank you yeah, so much. Of